Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Jesus A Coffee Conversations. It is Wednesday, February 6th and it is my birthday eve. I will be turning 35 tomorrow and I am so excited and I cannot wait to celebrate. So I'm doing things differently and as you can probably tell from my title, I am going to be talking to you about 35 lessons that I have learned over the years. So you do not need your Bible, but make sure you have your journal in case you want to jot some of this information down. And of course, make sure you have your coffee. So, and I have my notes here. So if you see me looking down, I am looking at that. So lesson number one that I have learned is to trust God. It is not easy to trust God at first, um, especially if it's your first time like really going through a situation but trust God. God knows everything and God knows what is best for you and God is going to work it out for you. So trust him. The second lesson I've learned is it's okay to be alone. Society will say, ladies, especially you need to be in a relationship. You need to have a man. And if you don't, then something is wrong with you. That is not true. Throw that out the window. If you are single, that is perfectly okay. Wait for that man or that woman from God. Lesson number three, trust yourself. God gives us wisdom and he gives us discernment. And when you have a decision to make, trust yourself that you are making the best decision. You prayed about it. God told you, you know, what you should do. So just go ahead and make that decision and trust yourself when you do it. Lesson number four, let go of your timetable. There was a time in high school, I had it planned out. I was like, I'm going to be married by 25 and have about four kids by the time I hit 30. And it did not happen. I, like I said, I'll be 35 tomorrow and I'm not married and I do not have kids yet. So your timetable is not God's timetable. God does not operate in space and time. So to us, what seems like two years or has been two years, to God, it's only been two days. So you need to get rid of your timetable and give it to God and know that God's timing is perfect. He might not come when we want him to, but when he does, it is always on time. Lesson number five, travel. This world is so big and God is so amazing. Like everything he created is amazing. So make sure that you take the time to travel so that you can see it. It is not that expensive to travel. If you, um, like when I travel, especially when I travel like out of the country, I use um, like back package deals. So that means that I will get my flight and my hotel together in one price. And that price is actually cheaper to do it that way. And also, if you want to go to like the islands, like Cancun or Dominican or Jamaica, those kind of places, they have all-inclusive deals where it will include your flight, your hotel, and your food. And the prices are very reasonable. And it could be like, maybe you could do like seven days and get your flight, hotel, and food deal and only spend like maybe 500, 600 bucks, depending on when you book it. But they are very, very reasonable. So get your hotel and your flight together to save money. Maybe if you're going somewhere, you might want to go doing like the off season and that can also drop down the prices drastically. So get your passport. Summer is coming up. Book a trip. Lesson number six, get out of your comfort zone. God has so much for us and we have to get out of our comfort zones to do it. And it took me a while, like years to get to the point that I was like, you know what? I'm going to get out of my comfort zone and I'm going to do it. And I'm not saying try to do everything all at one time, but maybe pick like one thing that's, you know, out of your comfort zone, do it. And then once you do that, then you're like, oh, okay, I can, you know, pick something else. And then you do that thing. And before long, you are completely out of your comfort zone. 
and you're okay with getting out of your comfort zone. So take the steps to get out of that comfort zone. Lesson number seven, surrender to God. Yes, we have plans. Yes, we have dreams. Yes, we have goals. Yes, we have our own will, but surrender all of that to God. And it's, it's scary to do it, um, but it is so worth it. So maybe it's your finances. Surrender your finances to God. Surrender your relationships to God. Like give God everything and you will not be disappointed. Like he will make sure that you are taken care of. Lesson number eight. Stop caring about others' opinions and their approval. People are funny. They will like you one minute and then two minutes later they are talking about you behind your back. So don't get caught up in the opinions and approval of people. The only opinion that matters is God's opinion and the only approval you need is from God. Lesson number nine, take time for yourself. Ladies especially, excuse me, we are people pleasers. We will put everyone and everything else before us. And we need to take the time for ourselves. So it could be if you, you know, want to get your hair done, schedule that appointment, schedule a massage, um, take a nice hot bubble bath and just be in there, you know, have the candles and the music, or if you just want to sit in there with candles and read a book or what have you, take time for yourself. Lesson number 10, God cares about everything you care about, even the small things. And I want to tell you a quick story. This happened um, last year, Christmas time, and I needed an eyebrow pencil. And um, I was like on my last one, it was about to like be like all the way <laughs> empty. So I prayed for God to let Target have the eyebrow pencil because I have been going and every time I went, they did not have it in stock. So I prayed. I was like, God, please let them have this eyebrow pencil. I don't care if it's just one. So I prayed that prayer, you know, early that morning. And I didn't get the target until later on that evening, like about five or six o'clock. And first of all, I got a great parking space. And if you shop at Target, you know how crazy Target is, especially on a Saturday. And it was Christmas time. But God blessed me with a parking space right there in the front. I went inside to the makeup session. Y'all that had my eyebrow pencil. And it was only one in that spot. And so when I say that God cares about everything, even the small things, he cares about everything, even the small things. Lesson number 11. Tests and trials don't last. While you're going through, it may seem like you have been going through it for a long time. The devil might tell you, you're always going to be going through this. It's never going to end. That is not true. So the moment that you feel like giving up, you feel like quitting, don't. Just keep reminding yourself, this is not going to last forever. And usually when you get to that point where you're feeling like that, it means that your breakthrough is around the corner. Lesson number 12, protect your time and energy. People, some of them are energy drainers and time wasters. So you want to protect your time and energy. If somebody calls you and you know that they are just going to be negative and they're just going to drain you, don't answer that phone. So you want to make sure that you protect your time and your energy. Lesson number 13, it is okay to not be okay. So if you are going through something and you need to cry, that is okay. If you are angry and you want to scream about it or vent, that is okay. If you are feeling depressed a little bit, it is okay. So you want to make sure, first of all, that you pray about it. If you prayed about it, if you talked to God about it, if you've done all that you know to do and you're still feeling that way, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you need to talk to a trusted friend or if you need to go beyond that trusted friend and talk to a counselor or a therapist, do that. Lesson number 14, speak up. We all have a voice and our voices should be heard. And I am just now, for those of you watching that know me, you know that I am quiet and I am shy. 
Um, but I am getting out of that. I am starting to speak up. So make sure that you speak up. Lesson number 15, have a small, <coughs> excuse me, trusted circle. Everyone that smiles in your face and claims to be your friend is not your friend. So if you only have one person that you trust and one person that is like your true best friend, then that one person is all you need. I have three really great, amazing girlfriends. And then I also have, you know, associates and friends as well. But my circle is small. Like I have three best friends and that is perfectly okay. Lesson number 16, be honest. There is no reason, especially if you are of a certain age, there is no reason that you should be out here lying and deceiving people. Be honest. It is okay to hurt somebody with the truth. Instead of hurting that person with a lie. So, because once you tell a lie, you have to tell another lie and then another lie. And then you have to keep up and remember all the lies that you told. And it's exhausting. So, just go ahead and be honest. Lesson number 17. Rest. Stop being busy all of the time because you will run yourself into the ground doing that. So, take the time to rest. Whether it's maybe if it's a weekend, you sleeping in an extra 30 minutes to an hour, or if you want to have like a lazy day, there are times that I take lazy days, like a Saturday and a Sunday, or sometimes I might do like a Saturday and I'll just have a lazy day where I'm like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just going to, you know, get up, get dressed and then just chill. So it's me, you know, it's reading my Bible all day and spend time with God all day, or maybe it's, you know, spending quality time with him for like an hour or two and then maybe I'll do something else. Maybe I'll read a book or I'll, you know, just sit and enjoy coffee and watch a good movie or, you know, what have you, but I'll take the time to rest. Um, lesson number 18, the most important relationship you will ever have is with Jesus. So make sure that you develop that relationship, spend time with him, read his word, pray. Lesson number 19, make time for fun. Life is too short for you to be serious all the time. So make sure that you schedule in some fun, whether it's going to the amusement park or maybe whatever it is that you consider to be fun. It could be going to the park or maybe if you enjoy reading, buy yourself a new book and read it. If you like to paint, you know, go to a painting class or whatever it is that you like to do for fun. Have fun. Lesson number 20, laugh even when you're hurting. Laughter is like a medicine. So even if you have to laugh through your tears, do it. And then maybe you'll realize that once you start laughing, even if you're going through something, you might realize that, you know what, it's not as serious as I thought it was. Or it'll maybe brighten your perspective and you'll say, you know what, Everything's going to be okay. So make sure that you take the time to laugh. Lesson number 21. Stop trying to change people. The only person that you can change is yourself. And the only person that can change somebody else is God. So you can pray about it for God to change somebody. But God will change you first. And then he will change that other person. So you cannot change anybody. Stop trying to change people and just focus on yourself. Lesson number 22. Take your health seriously. Go to the doctor. That does not mean that every time you cough or every time you sneeze that you need to go run into the doctor. It just means schedule your physicals. Schedule, you know, if if you have like moles on your body, make sure that you're um, keeping an eye on those and Make sure if you see like any changes like size or color or what have you that you're keeping track of that. Um, ladies, your cycle, keep track of that. If anything is out of the ordinary, like keep track of it so that you can say, okay, this has been going on for like two months now. I probably need to go get it checked out. So make sure that you are paying attention to your body. And when you go to the doctor, they're going to ask you certain questions like, when did you first notice it? How long has it been going on? 
what's the pain level like if there is any pain they're gonna ask you questions and it will help if you keep track of everything and like a calendar or something so that you can give it to them or you'll be able to tell them but take your health seriously make sure that you're getting checked out men especially make sure you're going to the doctor getting those physicals and tests done and i know people are scared to go to the doctor a lot of times because they think that the doctor is going to find something bad like cancer or diabetes or whatever it is but it's best to know and catch that stuff early so that you can treat it versus you letting it go undetected and then it's spread or is worse and it's not really a lot that can be done about it so you want to make sure that you go get checked out and if there is a problem you're catching it early um, lesson number 23, have a glass half full perspective. Stop being a pessimist and a Debbie Downer and seeing the half, I mean the glass half empty. So have a positive outlook on life instead of being negative all the time. Like me, I'm a positive person. Stuff happens, I see the glass half full instead of half empty. And it makes you approach your problems and situations differently. Lesson number 24, trust actions, not words. People will tell you a whole bunch of stuff, but if their actions don't line up with what they're saying, then that lets you know where their heart really is. So trust their actions, especially like if you're in a, if you're in a relationship and that person is telling you that they love you and this, that, and the third, but they're not spending time with you, and when they do spend time with you, they act like it's a chore to spend time with you. That shows you right there where you really stand in their opinion. So look at people's actions instead of what they say. Lesson number 25. It is okay to cut people out of your life and not feel bad about it. If somebody is toxic, cut that person out of your life and don't feel guilty for doing it. Lesson number 26. It is okay to not be pressed, to be married, or to have kids. Ladies, this is especially for you. Like, society will make it seem like something is wrong with you if you are not married by a certain age, if you don't have kids by a certain age. And it's crazy because not everybody is in a rush to get married. Not everybody's in a rush to have kids. Or some people that don't want to get married and don't want to have kids but it's okay if you don't feel the pressure to do it, that is perfectly okay. Lesson number 28, listen to that gut feeling. So a lot of times, you know, we have moments where we are like something told me not to do that or something told me something was not right with this person or something told me. That is the Holy Spirit trying to lead you and guide you and let you know that, hey, something is not right. You need to go around that and avoid it and avoid it so listen to your gut feeling lesson number 29 take care of your body because you only have one make sure that you're eating right make sure you're exercising make sure you're getting the proper amount of sleep that you need make sure you're drinking your water like take care of your body lesson number 30 Never underestimate the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is for you. It is not for the person or the people that you are forgiving. Forgiveness is necessary. And I did a forgiveness video. So if you have not seen it, check it out. If you have seen it and you need a refresher, go look at it again. Forgiveness is important and when you forgive it does not mean that that person has to be a part of your life It does not mean that they have to be your best friend Or any of that it just means that you forgive them and you lose them and then that frees you so that you're not bitter and angry so forgiveness is powerful and You will realize that once you forgive somebody how powerful and freeing it really is Lesson number 31, cut out crap TV and music and set goals and a plan to achieve those goals. 
So instead of sitting there watching Housewives or whatever other stuff, Jerry Springer or whoever it comes on TV that is not really doing anything for you, and instead of listening to all these rappers that are really not rapping about nothing but drugs, sex, and killing and a whole bunch of other craziness, turn that all off. Get yourself some goals and then come up with a plan on how you can achieve those goals. Lesson number 32. You don't have to apologize or explain why you, why you are cutting certain people out of your life. There is a point in my life where um, when I was cutting people out of my life that I felt like I needed to explain myself. And I will never forget this. My dad told me that I don't have to explain myself to anybody. And that's true. If you are cutting somebody out of your life, obviously you're cutting somebody out of your life, out of your life for a reason. Hopefully it's not to be mean or spiteful or, you know, vengeful. But hopefully if you are cutting somebody out of your life, it's for a good reason. Maybe they're toxic or maybe, you know, if it's somebody that you were in a relationship with and you know that the only way that you can heal and move on is to completely cut them out of your life, then do that and don't apologize for it and don't explain yourself to them. If you could just tell them, you know what, I have to cut ties with you. I'm not going to go into the details of why, but I'm just letting you know that I need to cut ties with you and I'm going to do it. And then sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Delete their number, block their number, block them on Facebook, block them on Instagram, whatever it is you have to do. Lesson number 33, tell those you love that you love them every chance you get. Life is short and you want to make sure that the people you care about and the people you love, let them know that you love them by telling them, whether it's you picking up the phone and just calling and say, you know what, I was just thinking about you and I just want to let you know that I love you. I know maybe we haven't spoken to each other in a while or we haven't you know, because life gets busy. Um, but make sure that you tell them. Tell them. Because usually when people are faced with death, um, and like you might have time. Sometimes it happens suddenly. And then sometimes you have a little bit of time. But a lot of times people, the one thing that they regret is that they didn't tell that person that they love them. So take, make sure that you let people know that you love them. Lesson number 34, see things through the eye of a child. Children are innocent and they see the joy in just about everything. So see life through the eyes of a child. Like if you're going through something, try to look at it from like a, um, a child's perspective and then it won't seem as big as you're making it. You know, or maybe like kid, like play, take time to play. Like when was the last time you went to the park and just got on the swing and started swinging? And, you know, I'm a teacher. <coughs> and so, you know, sometimes while the kids are at recess, I'll go out there with them and I'll get on the swing and I'll start swinging or I'll start playing with them or, you know, what have you. And it makes you have just like a lighter feeling about life. You start feeling more joyful and at peace about things. So, see life through the eyes of a child. And then the last one, lesson number 35, is to save, save, save. I wish that when I was 16 and I first started working, that I would have saved my money. And you can start now. Like, it's never too late to start saving. So, I don't care if it is that you put a dollar into a savings account every single week. Do that. Start somewhere. And when you get paid, you pay God first, yourself second, and everything else third. So make sure that you start to save. And if you need help on, you know, learning how to do that, Dave Ramsey is great. You know, you can watch his stuff, on, um, his videos on YouTube. And, you know, he talked about like the nine baby steps. Um, and he says, you know, you want to make sure that you have at least a thousand dollars saved for like an emergency. And then he talks about like the snowball effect. So if you have like credit card debt, you pay off your um, largest balance first. Or I know some people say like the highest interest rate first or whatever, but you pay it off. And then you take the money that you were paying on that card and apply it to the next smallest bill. 
pay that off and then just keep going until your debt is eliminated. But make sure that you start saving your money. Like if you um, work and your company has a 401, 401k account, get one, especially if they match. Get a Roth IRA or CDs or, you know, whatever so that you can start saving that money. And it gets you something that has like a high interest on it. But make sure that you look into all the different things that you can invest in and start saving your money now. Even if you are watching this and you're 60, it is not too late to start saving. So anyway, I hope that you all enjoy this video and you got something out of it. Um, I will probably type the 35 lessons in the description box below. Um, and I will also put down my um, other social media accounts. So my Instagram, Facebook, my blog. Make sure you subscribe to my blog and you follow me on Instagram and Facebook. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and press that red button. Also, make sure that you press the little bell so that you are notified when I upload videos. Please share this video. Continue telling others about my channel. And I will probably try to post something Saturday. Um, but if I don't get around to it Saturday, then Sunday. So please keep an eye out for that. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. God bless. Bye.